This time to thrive live is for you because no matter who you are, you deserve love too. Hey Camilla, how are you? Good, how are you? I am good. I see your lovely aesthetic background and your book in the background. Have you received your copy yet? I was wondering had it been sent because I was thinking oh, it'd be nice if I could. I know you know, get a photo with it or something like that. Well, I would have liked you to have it, but it hadn't been sent out. And I was like, oh, I wanted her to have it today, but it has been sent now. So you probably get it today or tomorrow. So We'd like to have a read through it, but it's entirely up to yourself. I mean, I'd love you to read it because then I feel like we're talking about self-love and journey. I think I, I do because the ones I've done before where it's been an author, I have read their book before and then, you know, so you can bounce off what you were. Yeah. Because it, it forms more of a rapport and, you I know. I think so. Yeah, it's not like we're complete and utter strangers there. It's, I mean, that's, that's what I think. No, I agree with you. And so I really wanted you to have it for today. But I think yeah, that would so be better because then I could actually hold yeah. the book and I appreciate you sending me it. And of course. I love what you're sharing on your Instagram. So honest and helpful for so many, I'm sure. Oh, that's so nice. That's so beautiful to hear, especially from like someone so inspirational to me. And, you know, I feel like I've known for like so many years through Strictly Come Dancing and just being along the way. It takes a lot though to be vulnerable and, 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 and have courage to show your true self, which is just so beautiful. So that's why I really wanted to do the chat with you too, because I, you know, I can only imagine that it would have been quite a journey. And in yeah. that, that out oh no it's it's really really i do appreciate your time so much and uh come on and share your wisdom with everyone so i will very much look forward to chatting to you then me too me too darling Lots have a great love. evening speak See you soon. soon bye amy yay we got there yay how exciting <laughs> matchy matchy Oh, how, far, how far are you through? So I like to journal and really, you know, this is a book that would take a lot of time to really work through. Yeah, It's something, you know, that you would actually use as like a guidebook continuously through your life. I think that you can tap into some things at some stages and then you need others at other times. So you know, there's so much in it that I'm like, right, so at the minute I'm on like page 67. Yeah. The toolbox exercises and stuff, like they take a lot of time and, you know, I you know. can really sort of I work know. through. But the one thing that stood out for me in the book was just so far has been this crystal story and that research to back up the words that that water was labeled with, whether that was positive or negative, influenced whether the water crystallized. That is totally fascinating. Right? So we're talking about how our words have power. And then I, re I went to listen to Gwyneth Paltrow speak to someone about words and, and food. And just to, to kind of touch on that as well, when I was living, when I first came over, it's a few years back, because she's she publishes books through Google or through their company. And this yeah. lady who was talking about diet and food, she said, here's the thing. She said, if you eat a donut, right? I know, of course, there's some science behind the sugar and stuff. But yeah. how do we know what is worse, the donut or the guilt that you give yourself after? Because guilt is a low vibration frequency word. So if you're shaming and guilting yourself after eating it, maybe you just shouldn't have had it in the first place. Yeah. Because the sugar and, and the guilt, that's like a double whammy of bad. So if you're going to have it, like my dad would say, enjoy it. So that I is know. my rule. If I choose to have a treat. I re refuse to guilt myself after because that right there is a, a double, double down. <laughs> I know. It's, it's so powerful though, right? This language that we assign to what our minds are telling us about ourselves and what we're labeling our world as. For example, just food, taking away the moral compass of food being like good or bad and 
making it what it is for you and just so much to be said for language but yeah I thought that research study in particular leads nicely into what we wanted to talk about which is you know how to love yourself and that self-talk is a massive part of that right and you know really changing how you actually speak to yourself yeah it's huge and I think I grew up obviously at some of your followers will know this, but I grew up in the dancing world and constantly scrutin- under scrutiny, you know, and, and also like, you know, you, you're looking at how you're moving your hand, how you're looking, you're like, you're constantly like criticizing mm. your own body. Mm. So for me in my twenties, I really woke up to my own self-talk. I realized that I'm not kind. It's a, it's a, it was a miracle that my body was working with me, to be honest, in, as an athlete, because I was so hard on my body. Mm. And It was my own self-love journey where I really would catch myself thinking, I'm being so hard on myself. Why? Like, how is that even helping me? It doesn't make me feel good. Um, And so it takes time to change that narrative, right? Um, Because we pick up so much as well from the media and from comparison and just so much. It takes uh, a lot of work. I was thinking, you know, aside from the words we say to ourselves, you know, that they can actually be reinforced by our environment and what others say around us. So that even if we've done a lot of healing ourselves, that if someone then comes back and sort of reaffirms what you have healed from, you know, it might be, you know, triggering to you. And would you have found that you had a lot of outside influence on your appearance aside from, yeah, your own sort of self, what you were saying, and that all fed into it then? Yeah, in the dancing world, yeah, for sure, because we would have what's called a write up, right? A write up about your dancing, but yeah. really, where does it stop being? When is it just about the dancing, and when does it become personal? Do you know, because somebody mentions yeah. um, your foot or your sometimes you start to feel like it, sometimes you will take it personally, and that's why I love the book The Four Agreements so much. Um, because yes. they, they talk about not taking things personally that was a huge one for me too to just know what's business and dancing was that and that was my business that was my career that was not my life is not who I am yeah so, but that takes strength and self-worth and also like if people yeah people would say just things that you think you know have you put on weight like all these things that people say mm-hmm. and they, they think that you know they're helping but it's not particularly helpful right yeah um, I don't think a lot of times these comments come from a bad place no. like people think that they're actually you know doing you a favor or caring about you but that yeah it can be very detrimental and I think as well when you were saying I'm really focusing on particular body parts I'm thinking mm-hmm. you know, breaking your body up into parts like our bodies are a whole you know it's completely dumbfounded yeah. you know that you can then analyze scrutiny every part of your body and I mean how good is that <laughs> well, well exactly and then it comes back to what I'm passionate about which is sort of working with the subconscious mind I do that with most of my clients through hypnosis and so forth. And I understand that we get triggered in our adult life. Some things that has happened when we were, you know, very young from zero to six years old, when our subconscious was created. And I remember this specific comment that stood out about me having an overarched foot. Mm -hmm. I know it sounds so like nothing now, right? But but I tell you, right? Do you know why it upset me so much? Because if anybody has read my first book, um, Dream, Believe, Succeed, for me to even learn to dance was like a miracle to me because my foot was like up here when I was born, like dangling. It was like that. It had no strength in it. It had nothing. And like the doctor told my mom that I wouldn't walk properly. My mom sent me to dancing so that I would strengthen my ankle. And every day she had to massage it. And she used to watch me and say, oh, be careful. Because it would like kick out. It would do its own thing. It was like a a sort of funny thing between in the family. Like my foot would just like flick out. It had nothing, like not the same control. So for me to get to a place where I could even overarch my foot, right? I mean, that was not even a problem. Do you know what I mean? It was a, it was a, an amazing thing that I gotten that far and became a champion from not being able to walk properly to, you know what I mean? So I think that, that's, that's incredible. Sort of, that's yeah. something I would never have known that, you know, that's such a, you know, people just sort of probably assume that, oh, you're just born as a dancer. You have to, and oh, then no. but you've actually like defeated all the odds against what people yeah. said was possible for you. Yeah. 
and I had to wear all the orthopedic shoes, which I did not like, because I thought that, you know, the kids were laughing at me at school. I was like, don't make me wear them, mom. Um, and all of that. And I know it's just funny. We all, everybody has their own journey. And that's the thing, isn't it? But self-talk, I'm passionate about. Yeah, it's super, super important. And it is something we can train ourselves to, to change. It takes yeah. work and discipline, just like building your, you know, any muscle in the body or a six pack, right? You have to keep catching it and keep bringing it back. I tell you what I added um, in the beginning, which I thought was very helpful. Whenever I would catch myself saying something not kind about myself, mm -hmm. I would say, and I love myself anyway. Oh, oh yeah. I just finished the sentence with that. And I love myself anyway. And just always being mindful to do that as well, do you know, and actually catching those thoughts. You know, a lot of people are just sort of going over just this negative and it becomes a real spiral, but they never actually like actually become aware of it and flip it. You know, they're not doing that work. And I think like that's so important and actually flipping your script, right? Yes. yes. And I want to say to anybody thinking, well, that's really hard. It is hard. And the reason why it's hard it is. is because of the negativity bias in the brain. Our yeah. brain wants to go to the negative over the positive. So just anybody watching, that's not just you. That's you, me, and everybody. So know yeah. that, yes, it takes work because it likes to go to the negative. So it takes training. I also loved another sort of exercise. I love the way it's all split into boxes and actual toolbox. So Another exercise that really stood out for me, which I have done previously and found, you know, truly transformative, actually, the wee sun and, you know, doing speech bubbles yeah. and writing all the negative emotions, but then embracing and manifesting what you want. I think mm. there's so much power in that that mm. people don't realize, you know, no. and that can be applied to every situation, mm. money, family, relationships, friends work to know that you can actually change things totally reframing has been one of probably i would say one of the greatest tools that my coach taught me way way back in the in the day when i really needed help and when yeah. i was seeking to work with somebody when i learned the reframing that tool that you're saying about doing the mind map <clears throat> i I, I literally would do it all the time. If I come off a phone call or an email arrives and I feel really triggered, I would immediately do it because... You still do it now? I still do it now. Yeah. I still do it now because here's the thing. When I was an athlete, I was very good at um, suppressing or pushing aside yeah. uh, feelings, right? Because that was not always convenient if you were going to go to yeah. do a competition. I was like, later, later, right? Yeah, you so, need to be in the in the zone. Right, like we can't right. we can't have feelings right now. No, exactly, exactly. And I was then went through a tough time. I realized that that was not a helpful strategy going forward. And I'm sure you, you know this, right? It's really helpful to learn to feel what we're feeling and to validate what we're feeling because that's real. But I realized that I don't need to always linger there. That when I put it out on paper, something actually physically happened. And there's research behind that. When we write things out by hand, mm. we kind of create space between our thoughts and, 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 and who we really truly are. You know, we're so much more than our thoughts. <laughs> we're, we're, we're so much more than... We're way as well. Right? Yeah. 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 And then you get to pick. You're like... Oh, okay. So I see this now and I understand that I got triggered and I'm very angry, but let me look at it this way. Mm. Oh, so maybe I got triggered because something within me that I can now forgive or let go of, or maybe I don't want to be friends with this person because they're not treating me with whatever it is, but you, you create a, a space where you can really um, solve things. It's really fascinating. Because we have a visual brain, right? And so when mm -hmm. thoughts are in our head, like, you know, there's a lot of so many thoughts. So really writing it down on paper. Like I have just always been addicted to notebooks and pens and stationery. <laughs> I, I probably you have like so many down here beside me. Like I have hundreds. It's honestly like <laughs> one of my biggest purchases. And I am not ashamed. Like such a gig, whatever. If it's uncool, I don't really care. I'm out here doing the work and actually, you know, changing things that I'm not happy with. And I love that, you know, you are still doing this. I feel like, and I would love to know what you think on this, you know, the best therapist and coach actually have therapists and coaches themselves and you know yeah. do they don't 
we're not just fully transformed no, humans. I wish. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> you know, that we still do work and, you know, evolve and grow ourselves because we should never stay stagnant anyway, no matter what stage you're at, right? Amy, you know, we, I feel like we go, it's like being on a roller coaster and then you finish the roller coaster and you're like, ah, oh, that was fun. Or that was rough. Yeah, and you then one and, journey yeah. and then only starts another. There we go. So I was at a point in my life where I was like, oh, it's, I, I felt like I'd really, it's been like a journey. And I was like, this is a good spot. And then we got the phone call that my dad was unwell. Yeah. And it was serious. And then he passed away and I was met with grief. And I thought, right, wow. Okay. Okay, universe. Here we go on the grief. Journey. Yeah just gotta kind of flow with it and uh, we're all always learning and evolving always there is no end where are we going we're already here like there's no I know oh I love that yeah. where are you going because so many are on the pursuit I think of chasing you know future dreams or goals or whatever rather than really appreciating where we are now and sort of being there's so much about presence as well. And I know you talk a lot about mindfulness and everything. And it doesn't even need to be, oh, you're sitting down, hmm, ha, no, meditation. No. And we can be mindful with everything and every action we take every day. And you know why I'm passionate talking about it, Amy, is because for a lot of years, I was not present in oh, yeah, anything I, I did. That's why was, we do it so much. I was so busy. You know, our lives are just like a blur. We're <laughs> I think whenever you actually learn to open your eyes it's like uh, you've opened your eyes for the first time in your life and it's, it's incredible and you want to share that with as many people as possible I can understand your passion oh, there yeah totally I was a workaholic honestly yeah I was just work 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 yeah and that I ended up in a burnout which was hideous hideous but the universe thought well we need to teach her something here <laughs> <laughs> I think that's <laughs> what those burnouts really are for, oh. you know, that you go and go and go for so long and it gets to a stage where you literally can't take anymore. And You're right. Um, it, it's, it's interesting when you hit a burnout. I mean, that was just not interesting. It was hideous. But I think what frightened me the most was that I've always been somebody that's been super motivated yeah. and driven in my life. When I was burned out for that year, I had zero drive zero mm. motivation I even wondered if I would ever have a, a, a career again I was like I don't I'm not excited about any of it none of it so tired I was so I honestly tired. like what you just said there I'm like wow <sighs> you know it's crazy that other people go through exactly like obviously very different experiences but yeah. you know that I didn't know that you'd had a burnout I I feel like I publicized mine you know quite a lot like I had away for two years you know and did you do a lot of work in that time? You know, that those burnouts are what you actually need to really do the work that you've been avoiding, which so many avoid. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Of course I was avoiding it. It was about to feel hideous. <laughs> <laughs> I don't blame anybody trying to avoid it because it felt awful. It's awful. Hard. I really hit like the bottom of like exhaustion and 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 but i wouldn't be doing what i'm doing today with the with the authenticity and realness yeah, without that. If i hadn't felt it because honestly if you'd asked me a year before that if i would ever wake up one day and not feel motivated i would have said absolutely not yeah <laughs> and now i have this gauge within where i can feel like okay you've done a lot this week you take the weekend off like yeah. I can feel it. It's like I'm negotiating with myself because the athlete is still in there thinking I can do 24 seven. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm like, no, no, no. You're tired. You take the Respecting weekend. Respecting can... yourself. Yeah. yeah. Changing, you know, as well, even with self-talk or behavior, mm. that changing what you've continuously done for a long period that maybe you haven't even recognized is very destructive it's going to take time. It's not like a light switch you can change overnight, right? No. And we talk too little about that, the time. And you know why I think it's because somebody said to me when I went through heartache, and honestly, I did not want to hear it. I was like, how long is this going to take? I feel so yeah. bad. You want somebody... to fix right now? You need that band, dude. Like, stop right? it. 
And somebody said, um, it could probably take like three years or something. Oh, I, I literally was like, that, that is, is the most unhelpful me. thing you've ever said. But it was just a friend trying to be helpful, trying to say, don't yeah. rush this. You, this is your time to, but the way I was like, oh, well, that's not helpful. It's never going to take me three years. Well, it didn't, wasn't like I was miserable the whole three years, but I had mm. waves, right? Like you're toying at the journey and it was, there was parts that were more fun and less fun. And mm. it's the journey. And, and one thing I've realized, there is no rushing, whatever journey, when I work with clients, okay, I can have one client that will go on a sobriety journey and do it quickly, right? There'll yeah. be other people where it might take seven years to get to that mm. same point. They might, grief, there is no journey that's the same through grief there really isn't and you know this with healing if we're all different we're all different on our journeys and that's okay but we need to start talking about in society that these things take time and it's normal it's normal and I love the way you started your book as well like if you just want a quick fix to loving yourself or you know that, that this is really not for you because I think so much like we see the transformation and people talk about oh I was like this and I'm like this now but that actual time period in between like as I say you know for me it was two years of complete you know away from everything and really delving into myself and books and you know all this work yeah. and so you know it's not just it really it actually I mean it does take you to actually sit with yourself and do this yeah. because and it's not easy no, it, I mean, it's lonely it's actually crippling right? yeah it can it be is. it can be real crippling yeah. and like I always say fail to heal because yeah. you're really going to be feeling emotions that you've been suppressing and like avoiding for so long but how incredible is it to experience like the full array of emotions and not just always expecting like happiness and this elation that and also whenever you say about grief you know that those times of like real high you know and then the lows like the lows really make you appreciate the high and you know just that balance and being okay with everything totally and that's why I connect you so much to, to your journey and your honesty. And, and the video you posted the other day was so raw and real. And, and I think it's really important to share that it's really, it can be really scary when you, when you really hit that kind of point of, I, I, I don't know if I'm ever going to be okay. I, yeah. I'm sure I had that. Like, I was like, am I ever going to wake up and just feel happy again? Just like open my eyes and go, oh, the sun is out. I'm all right. Like I literally asked my friend, I said, do you think I'll ever just wake up and be just happy again? Because I had just lost that sense of who I, um, who I was as a person. And, uh, I, and so it's scary. It can be scary when we go through these inside out journeys. And sometimes as well, do you know, that you then just accept your reality, you know, and if you've been a certain way for so long, it's like, I'll never change now, you know, or, you know, there's there's sort of just excuses like that you feed into yourself. But I feel like no matter how long someone has been repeating negative behaviors, that it is always possible to change. And no matter like whether you say it takes you seven years or it takes you, yeah. you know, not so long at all. Like we're all on our own journey, and yeah. that like that's beautiful. To yeah. you know, not compare yourself to others either. You know, yeah, mm -hmm. they might have done it quicker than you, but. Who the hell cares? Exactly. And, you know, Amy, coming back to language, I think this is something really important too to allow for in society. I say, because I truly believe this now, I always um, leave space for someone to have changed because yeah. I, I have to in my job, right? Otherwise, why am I doing my job? There has been clients through time where they've said, oh, this family member will never change. And I'm like, well, we don't know that because we, are not, we can't actually predict it was like the, the past, future yeah. and we don't know so i said so we must leave space yeah. for that person to change and honestly i have seen miracles yeah. i have seen things where we thought that maybe that person may not but let's leave space and suddenly by one person in the family changing and that person starting to just do their life right in a different way they've started asking them hey you look like you feel like good about yourself and you look like you're taking care of yourself what do you do suddenly they're asking questions when the other person was telling them to change to read this book to do the thing they didn't care but suddenly yeah. by watching them walk the walk 
and looking after themselves, they want to know, what are you doing? Maybe I need some of that. So yeah. that really is the most inspiring thing we can do is to be truthful in ourselves. Just do, do you, as I say. Yeah. And other things will, will, will kind of move into place or out of your life kind of thing or become easier to deal with. <laughs> I know. And really, as well, touching on sort of some of the lessons in the toolboxes, of writing down and manifesting and bringing about and getting into that energy of what you are becoming and those relationships and everything, you know, you're saying invite space and actually do that work to really feel it as if it's already here. And subconsciously those, you know, words and empowerment, whether, you know, I always, whenever I was in the severe depths of despair, I wrote down, you know, I am empowering, like I had no memory, I was blind, and I was writing down, you know, I am knowledgeable, writing all these things that I was, I had faith that I was coming for me, regardless of whether that's your current experience, you can yeah. change. You can. And I was, I was actually just coming across something the other day. There's a part in the brain I call the system is RAS or something, but it actually means that it, it, when you say something like that, I the am particular activating yes. system. So it is RAS. Yeah. So when you say that, right, your, your mind, your brain starts to look for proof of that. Yeah. When you Seems put yourself gratitude. down. Totally. Totally. You know, the more you're grateful for, the more you get to be grateful for. And yeah. the more yeah. you're affirming, like loving yeah. words and kindness yeah. to yourself, the more you give that to others, right? And, you know, yeah. the book is called It's Not You, It's Me. So I guess, you know, that's really encouraging people to stop blaming others for being them and actually focus yeah. on being your best. Yeah, there's so much in the world that, you know, we it's out of our control, right? But how we, how, what we do in here is in our control. And that has a massive ripple effect in the oh, world. Yeah. In fact, that is how we will change the world for a better place. If we all get in charge of our vibe, right? And we, 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 we really find compassion first for ourselves and then for others. We cannot have compassion for others if we don't have it for ourselves. I love the saying, you cannot give away what you don't have. Yes. You Fill don't up have your love for yourself. Part. Yeah. How can you give the love? You said we don't find love. We are love. And that, see, when you said that, my whole body was just filled with warmth. I was like, there's so much truth in that. But it's such a simple, powerful statement. Yeah. You don't have anything to find. You already have. Yeah. You, you literally embody love. That changed my life, that sentence. Yeah. Because I, I honestly think there was a part of me that was like, there was like a void within me. Like I was so wanting someone to come and save me and give me that yes. love. Oh my goodness. I really did. I really did. I'm going to honest. I, I thought somebody, there'll be like somebody that fills that gap. Yeah. And then I realized I'm, what am I doing? I'm, I'm already here. Like I, I love, I love this. Like I'm, I'm okay. I'm home, you know? I know. So when I met my husband, I was in a completely different place and, and I knew that I didn't need him. I yeah. know that I would like to walk alongside of him, but I didn't like feel like a, he could ever take that away. It's, it's like extra. It's like the sprinkles yeah. on the cake, but I'm already a cake. I don't, you know, yes. I wasn't sorry to talk so much about cake. I love cake. Okay? No, Just, but <laughs> <laughs> I love cake. <laughs> right enough though, that there's so much in that, that, you know, the relationships and for actual healthy relationships to flourish, that you need to be and feel enough as you are and that anyone else that comes into your life is a beautiful addition to that, but it's not actually affecting your worth and, you know, that, that you are enough just as you. Yeah. It took you to do that work on you oh. to find that relationship right we can't yeah you know, if we're seeking out that love from others I feel like that's never going to lead to a healthy relationship is it no. because it's it, it's 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 dangerous right because yeah. they can take it away they can say I love you today but when you behave like that I don't yeah you're in a vulnerable well, position I'm out there. and then you're like oh my goodness you know you're and left yes, broken and then you'll probably find and seek someone exactly the same and it's just that repeated behavior over and over again for totally. endless life 
Totally. And I think, I don't know if you, you experience this too. Sometimes when we, I think, I just want to share this, when we make changes, it's really, uh, we, we often would like the people that we love the most to really see us in the new way. But if somebody mm-hmm. is listening now and going through changes, <clears throat> please know that what you see is the most important, that you know your truth, because there can be people around you who still love you, but who's yeah. on their journey. Maybe they're not quite um, there yet in your, you know, w- what you've gone through. Maybe they can't yet see you how you see you. People um, only see you from their experience. And there's yeah, so exactly. much in that. So they're not really seeing you for who you are. And that's, that's nothing to do with you. And it helps to let go of needing that validation or needing that person to see you as the new you, if that makes sense, because they may not be able to yet. But by continually just showing up as you, then they will eventually see it and continue, you know, believing (laughs) that they do already see it as if it's here now. And, you know, that this will eventually come to be. And and you don't even need everyone. We cannot control what people think of us, no matter how much we feel. And yeah, it might be a bit discouraging at times. You know, you wish like, why can't they just see me that I'm yeah. amazing now? And yeah. people can often, if they haven't healed themselves, that they want to bring you back into their destruction. If you oh have yeah, that. especially in families. There's a, oh my goodness, Camilla, yeah. right? Do you know, and this we can, can be, be 12 like that. <laughs> <laughs> One comment, 12 years old. What, what do you mean? <laughs> your, your, your whole vibration just changed. You're like, it's me. I'm 28. I'm not a child anymore. But families and really close friendships, that this can be really hard because these are people you really love and value. Yeah. You know, that it's not just easy. And to actually maintain boundaries with such. And, you know, boundaries. Be willing to (laughs) not just be willing to accept this and listen to it. Because if we're always having that fed into us whenever we're doing this work, it can really set you back. Yeah. Boundaries have been, I think, a big one on my journey. I think for anybody that likes to people please and oh you know <laughs> yeah oh yeah literally your whole life you know make it like teetering around you know eggshells we don't want to step on anyone's toes I would rather die than you know yeah. negatively affect someone but we we literally have to take away that control over how we yeah. affect others you know yeah. we literally don't know what anyone has been through and us just breathing can trigger someone <laughs> Totally. I'm, I'm pretty good at boundaries and I'm really proud of it now because it took a yeah. lot of work. It took you a long time. Oh, you should yeah. be proud. Like yeah. you've been through a journey with that. I truly trust that the people, and I think I took this sentence from Oprah when I first got to LA and I knew one person when my husband and I moved here. And I kept saying, I believe that the people that, will, that need to be in my life or will be in my life will always be in my life. Mm. Like I just trust, I trust that the people will appear and be here. And I just, I have no fear around that. I, I trust that the people who really love me and who I love, I respect their boundaries and they respect mine. But we shouldn't hold on to relationships because I feel like they can serve us at different times and everything as well. Do you know that, yeah, someone might be good for us at one particular time, but then maybe totally. further down the line, they're, we're not really aligned anymore. And to just mm-hmm. be flexible and open with, letting that go as well and I think that comes down to when you've done a lot of work on yourself as well that you feel enough as you are that I mean relationships can be just free-flowing and they are what they are if you're one you're making space for another I agree just practicing um non-attachment right yeah Mm. it's very healthy four main factors that anyone who's watching this would that you have broken your book down into are self-awareness, self-acceptance, self-love and self-care. And that really encompasses like everything that you sort of need to start with. Totally. And there is a link in the book too, to visualizations and meditations that go with the exercises as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I think for anyone that is looking to get into this and, you know, really explore it, like this book is obviously a great place to start. I know you do have other books. You have a lot of free content out there as well, you know, in terms of Mm -hmm. meditations and hypnosis that people can access. And yeah, sort of for you to share 
your handles and where people can find you and I'm sure people can work with you one-on-one coaching as well yeah so all my details are on sendme.tv and uh, Instagram is at Camilla Dallarock and yes I have dream believe succeed reinvent me and it's not you as me but I mean it's not you as me it's like a a life coaching session in a book basically yeah um, yeah there's a lot of, of, of actually work to do yourself which is 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 a really great journey to go on a great place to begin yeah, I don't think this book is something that, you know, you would just read like in one night, no. for example. I was thinking, oh, yes, I'll have this whole book read before <laughs> we do our talk. And then I was like, do you know what? I don't want to rush this whole book before yeah. our talk. I want to sit and work through this and make it yeah. like my little Bible, because that can be really what, you know, it is for you. Yeah. Because no matter how much I, you know, do myself, you always learn so much from others as well. Do you know, from totally. just going back into this material, it's important that we continue to do. Oh, and we can I we can it. easily avoid it because you know there's so much busy, busy, and work to do that we don't actually sit down and do this. But how amazing is it when you actually do make breakthroughs yourself? It's still like, so good, yeah. right? Yeah, receiving is is so important as as any anybody who's giving a lot in their work to receive. I just took another course with uh, Chopra about Ayurveda just so I could be the student and be the one that would just mm-hmm. be receiving, and it felt so good for my soul. Um, and by the way, I you know I, like most, I was like, I don't have the time, I don't have the time, yeah. and then I thought, hang on a minute. I cut out social media for like two or three months. I don't create any yeah. content, and I have got time to take a course. Yeah, Yeah, so I did. (laughs) I always see any time I say, oh, I don't have time for that. I it's one of those things I always catch myself and say, time is all we have. It's what I'm giving my time to and what I'm valuing that I am going to spend my time on. So yeah, maybe that's you'll remember as well. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. Definitely. We have always all make, the have time, time in the world to spend totally. on whatever we want to do. And yeah. yeah, a lot of people would say, oh, I don't have the time to help yeah. myself, but you do, right? Totally. I can't show up in the world for other people if I don't, if I'm not willing to take care of myself. I just can't. No. No. well Camilla thank you so much. I feel like I could just talk to you all. I know, Amy. I feel about- you like a a sausage, I'm giving you a hug. I, I know, like, I need to come. Please. Whenever this lockdown Please. is lifted, like I yeah. will be dreaming of dancing together. So Perfect. And come meditate with me on Unplug Meditation. If anybody that's listening comes to Unplug Meditation and they've watched this recording, they can come and take one of my classes at Unplug Meditation on a Tuesday night and okay. say that, I was Amy's interview you, with you and I can be Camilla's guest tonight. Oh, that's so, so and lovely. you can too, if you come Yay. to LA. Oh my yeah. gosh, we should definitely set that up then so that I would be there. Then I'll, you know, announce that whenever this goes live that we can yeah. all tune in the Tuesday after that together. Yeah. Was so that unplugmeditation.com? That's on on yeah. a Tuesday night. Yeah. But if they come to the studio in LA on a Tuesday night at 9 p.m., they can be my guest for free and just say, I can, I can, I'm here in LA. I saw you on Amy's show and oh. come and meditate. But I can't wait for you to come and meditate with me. With no, Crystal. I honestly, <laughs> because I've not been to LA, I've only been to New York, I've been to Florida like yeah. seven times but honestly I want to tour every state in America like it is yeah. on my yeah. dream list and goals that I'm going to do but just waiting on you know lockdown lifting of and course. me being able to get over to yeah. you but yeah, I will be there as yeah. soon as I know I, can. I know you will and it's funny you say that because I had never been to LA either before I moved here I'd been to Florida and New York just like you said and then I was like let's move to LA oh that's amazing though so it was just like oh don't even know if i like it but sure we'll try it anyway we went for the visas we went on a on a just a crazy like we were like let's do something just that we both want to do yeah i mean we took a lot of work to get the visas and preparation and saving and all of that can imagine we our deal was we will be here for one month my husband and i and after one month we would agree whether we would go home or stay and we've yeah we stayed we're here seven years now so 
Seven years in LA. Wow. And you moved from London? Yeah, from Surrey, yeah. Amazing. No, because I'm I'm a big like I live to travel. So, yeah. you know, I just I get so fulfilled oh. and first through exploring. And I think it's one of the best things we could totally. do. Well, California, Amy, do like the whole of California is is honestly amazing. Not just LA. Like there's so much to do here. Yeah. So much. Yeah. So oh, many I'm so spots. excited. I'm like, oh, yeah. you're like opening your eyes to travel again. I'm like, ah, I know. Travel. Hopefully everybody can be able to travel soon when the world opens up again. Yeah, but at least for now, we can all get some good vibes in our lives on a Tuesday yeah. night. So Yes, that will be lovely for the meantime to delve our feet in uh, and get more of your inspiration. Yeah, and free meditations. Can, yeah, like yeah, you said, on my until website. we can yeah. meet in person, which will be yeah. very soon, we will hope. Exactly. And we can talk about cake and share cake together after the Ooh, meditation. I'll show you my favorite bakery that's right near Unplug and right near me. <laughs> oh, here! Yeah, I'm so excited. Yeah, cake is the cure, right? I think that's right? the best way to end it. <laughs> I'm Danish, and so cake, coffee and cake is a big thing in our culture. So that's never left me. <laughs> <laughs> you would love my mom as well because she would always take the cake over just any of the other food it's like <laughs> just cake please does she, have a baby <laughs> cake. does she totally ask if she's ever eaten cake for breakfast because i have <laughs> i don't oh. advise doing that every day but i may have done that in the past that's all i'm saying <laughs> like actually i think take away meal times all together like have cake for breakfast have pizza for breakfast like literally whatever but a little piece of cake you know <laughs> like in the morning pure sugar rush like i can just imagine it's like setting yourself up for comfort and it sounds like a perfect sunday morning ritual exactly <laughs> okay, Amy, i'll see you in la i hope yeah Lots of love, darling. You're amazing. Keep shining <laughs> your light brightly. So thank you. Bye. 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 <laughs> if you made it this far, I just want you to know I'm so proud of you for taking the time to learn to love you too and knowing you deserve to. And I would love to know if you could share beneath this video just one thing you love about you. And knowing that that's not a bad thing to just actually love yourself. Because in a world that's set on making us hate ourselves, loving ourselves is the greatest revolution of all. But there is a toolbox exercise I have created for you. So you'll find that over on my Instagram highlight under Thrive Alive. My Instagram is surviving now thriving. So come and find me there. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already to this channel. Click the wee thumbs up if you did like the video, of course. <laughs> it helps me know that you do want me to keep creating these for you. So until next time, I love you. Go love yourself.